1984, Dryer Looping would debut on the German fair circuit. Built by Schwarzkopf, this would be the first triple loop roller coaster. However, this coaster would have a rocky history of relocations and modifications. And unfortunately, in 2019, while it's run in Mexico under the name Cumera, the ride would derail and kill two riders. How did such a tragic accident happen? This is the story of Dryer Looping. The history of this troubled coaster began in the 80s with master designer Anton Schwarzkopf. Schwarzkopf, along with his partner Werner Stengel, built some of the most popular coasters at the time. Rides like Shockwave and Mindbender at Six Flags Parks helped Schwarzkopf gain notoriety, but their biggest market came with traveling coasters. These attractions were sold to German showmen who regularly transport them between fairs. Since they were designed to be portable, they could easily be taken apart, relocated, and reassembled. Now, Schwarzkopf has been building traveling coasters since the 50s between their Wildcat and Jetstar designs. But in the 80s, Schwarzkopf would design some of their biggest and best traveling coasters in the world. Some of their most well-known work was Alpina Bond, Colossus the Fire Dragon, and later, Olympia Looping. But while Schwarzkopf was a great designer, he admittedly lacked business skills. His company would file for bankruptcy several times, and by the end of the 80s, Schwarzkopf would shut down his manufacturing plant, but Schwarzkopf would continue to design rides in collaborations with other companies, such as Lisa Bergmanin with Zier and the previously mentioned Olympia Looping with BHS. But right before Schwarzkopf went under, they would create Dryer Looping. Dryer Looping is the first coaster to feature three vertical loops. The ride was sold to German showman Rudolf Barth. Dryer Looping would debut on the German fair circuit in 1984. The ride experience would be as followed. Passengers would board the 28 rider Schwarzkopf trains with those dinky minimal lap bars. The ride begins with a curved 111 foot 34 meter tall lift hill. This lift hill is different because while you're ascending the lift, you're also turning right. This is possible via booster wheel tires. Once at the top, you quickly whip down the twisted 70 degree drop while turning 180 degrees to the right. Now get used to turning right a lot on this ride because it only makes right turns for most of the ride. Following the drop is a steep ascent into the first of many brake runs. It's worth noting that due to how European fares are set up, most traveling coasters have large number of brake runs to maximize capacity. After this is another steep drop to the right followed by the ride signature moment. Back to back vertical loops. Schwarzkopf is known for their intense circular loops, so having two back-to-back -back causes some insane positive g-forces. This is followed by another ascending turn into a dip and another mid-course, followed by another descending turn into a singular vertical loop. Then you go through yet another turn into a dip and a slight right into a small drop. This leads into the first left turn into another mid-course, then a ramp followed by another right turn into the final brake run. This layout is repetitive, but this coaster is praised for its intense experience. Dryer looping would last 12 years on the German fair circuit before going on a world tour. After its run on the German fair circuit, this coaster would be sold to Sunway Lagoon in Malaysia. Renamed Triple Loop, this coaster would only operate from 1997 to 1999 before being relocated again, this time to Flamingo Land in the UK. Opened in 2000 under the name Magnum Force, this coaster would undergo a series of modifications. This includes a new paint scheme and modified restraints. That would be a sort of collar belt similar to the Premier Ride's comfort collars. Now because of how the G-forces on Schwarzkopf's are designed, the lap bars are in use due to the forces naturally keeping riders in their seats. This was done for either liability purposes or for extra protection. After being listed for two years, Flamingo Land removed Magnum Force in 2005. It's worth mentioning that Flamingo Land also had a rare Schwarzkopf shuttle loop that they also sold in 2005. So maybe Flamingo Land couldn't keep up with the maintenance and looked to make a quick buck. The triple looper would soon find itself in a rusty position down in Mexico. In 2007, Magnum Force would find itself in Mexico City at La Feria Chapultepec Magico. Now it's at this park when the coaster would change for the worse. For one, this coaster had an identity crisis, being called Montaña Infinitum, 
Montaigne Triple Loop, and finally settling on Cumera. That part is fine. The bigger problem is the lack of maintenance that La Fria did on Cumera. Side note, before I wrote this video, I was going to do a video on Cobra Tivoli Freehand due to how much they screwed up that ride. But I figured I'd address it here, so here we go. The reason why Cumera's maintenance was so poor was because La Fria was trying to save as much money as possible and performing the bare minimum. If you ever done a DIY project or any repair project, you know it's never a good idea to cut corners to save a few bucks. Now this goes for anyone watching this, do not ever cheap out on anything like Mr. Krabs. It's never a good idea to do the bare minimum to save a few dollars. This is because having too low of a budget leads to a terrible product. This goes in two ways. For the consumer, if it's made poorly, it leads to terrible guest satisfaction and never wanting to use it again. For the business, it leads to lower sales and the product not working properly. The bigger issue has to do with safety. If it's made really cheap, it can risk the safety of everyone involved. Now what does that have to do with Cumera? During the ride's final years in Mexico, La Fria was neglecting the necessary repairs. This led to broken parts on Cumera that La Fria never bothered to replace. The two most significant were the brakes and the wheel bogey. Remember how I said the ride had a ton of block zones? Schwarzkopf designed it to slow down the ride and reduce the forces. At La Fria, the brakes were not working, leading to Cumer to speed through the layout. But the issue with that is that due to the ride running faster than designed, it causes the ride to literally run itself into the ground. This leads into the other issue of the wheels. Due to the crazy speed and g-forces, the wheels on Cumera were experiencing too much stress and needed to be replaced. However, La Fria's negligence would result in what would take place on September 28, 2019. Before we move on, I'd first like to give my thoughts and prayers to the victims affected by this accident. This was tragic, and something that could have been prevented. I'm glad that La Fria has since shut down as a consequence of their actions, and I hope the victims may rest in peace and their families and those affected can recover. Note that I will be showing some of the photos of the accident for educational purposes. If you're sensitive to that sort of thing, I will have a timestamp for you to skip to. With that being said, let's move on to unwanted territory. On September 28th, 2019, Cumera was running as normal. At roughly 1.30pm, a fully loaded train dispatched out of the station and climbed the lift hill. The train traversed the first half without any issues. When the train was exiting the third and final loop, the fifth car's right wheel assembly detached from the main axle. As the train began traversing an upward sloping bank to turn, the remaining left wheel assembly on the fifth car, having nothing to brace it laterally, fell off the track as the rest of the train turned right. This now free-flying car, still being pulled by the rest of the train was flung into a support beam for the coaster, causing car 5 to be torn from the rest of the train. Car 5 then fell to the ground. Note that the lap bars never unlocked during the ride. However, due to the erratic forces exerted on the riders during the derailment, some or all of the riders were flung from the car. Two of the riders in car 5 were unfortunately killed. Two? Luckily survived. The rest of the train valid in the next low to the ground turn due to the loss of speed caused by car 5's violent derailment. Riders in this part of the train were left with minor injuries, though it was nearly even worse as post-accident photos showed that Cars 4's left wheel assembly was severely damaged by Car 5's derailment. There is video captured here, but for obvious reasons, I'm not going to show it. I will, however, have a link in the description if you are interested. An investigation was launched immediately after to find out how such a tragic event could happen. This was led by both the International Association of Amusement Parks and Attractions and National Associations of Amusement Ride Safety Officials in assistance with Mexican officials. Their findings would be released on October 14th, 2019. Here's what they found. They determined that Cumera has been operating outside of conditions set by its manual. The trains used on Cumera was some sort of Franken train of all the good parts as the coaster lost its capacity throughout the years. Many of the wheel assemblies, including the one that failed, were not branded and had no serial. This means that they were not made by Schwarzkopf. Keep in mind that it's not illegal in Mexico like it is in the US, but it was still out of compliance with the manual. Also, the manual was found to be lacking in information as only parts of it remained and it had been translated from German to English and then to Spanish. The post-accident inspection also revealed other problems such as cracks in the trains and the track as well as weakness in the structure itself, specifically in the first loop. Just look at this video, look how much it sways. But the main cause, the detachment of Car 5's wheel assembly, was due to the bolts not being assembled properly. A wheel assembly is a set of wheels that in conjunction with another wheel assembly on the other side of the car hold the trains to the track. Schwarzkopf intended it to be attached to the main axle by three bolts with varying sizes. Luffrey either placed them incorrectly or used the wrong bolts. 
This, combined with the extreme vibrations endured by the wheel assemblies due to the ride running faster than designed, caused this accident. All of this evidence to show the poor maintenance that Lufria did to cut corners and save some money. Look, I get it, Schwarzkopf went out of business, and it's hard to find parts, but that doesn't mean you have to go for the cheapest materials possible. Like, bro, that's not how it works. After the conclusion of this investigation, Lufria to Butcherbeck Magic Co's operators were charged with homicide. Because of this, Lufria has since shut down for good and other Mexican amusement parks like Six Flags Mexico have seen a 30% decrease. Now it's at this point where I must give a PSA or else I get slapped in the face with clickbait bullshit. If anyone watching this is afraid of roller coasters because of accidents like this, I encourage you not to. I make videos like these to clear up misinformation spread online about the few accidents that have happened, not to spread fear. Roller coasters is some of the safest things you can do. Most amusement parks aim to be as safe as possible for your enjoyment. The chance of death on a roller coaster is 1 in 750 million. To put that into perspective, you're more likely to win the lottery jackpot, get struck by lightning 12 times, win an Olympic gold medal, and date a hot superstar before dying on a roller coaster. Accidents like this deserve to be remembered and thought about so that we as a society can help prevent future accidents like this from happening in the future. As for the state of Kiyomera, the coaster would surprisingly find a new home. Around the same time all this fiasco was going on, a small park in Indiana was doing its own thing. Called Indiana Beach, this park is known for its classic boardwalk charm and apparently amazing tacos. You know, despite the fact that you're in the middle of Indiana, this park is also home to a trio of solid and weird CCI wooden coasters, a rare Schwarzkopf Jetstar 1, and the prototype SNS El Loco. However, Indiana Beach has had a rocky history under when both Morgan RV and later Apex ran the park from the Spackman family back in 2008. Then in February 2020, Apex Parks announced the closing of Indiana Beach. The reason for the closure was due to Apex Park's financial issues and soon filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy soon after. This was a real gut punch for both locals and enthusiasts who enjoyed the place. This park has been around since 1926 and to think we could have lost all that history was heartbreaking. And to think all of this happened less than a month before the COVID-19 shutdown. Yeah, that was a real kick in the nuts. But there was a light at the end of the tunnel. See, in April 2020, a businessman from Chicago named Gene Staples would buy Indiana Beach. Staples buy because he wanted many people to experience the park like he and his kids did back in the day. With a bit of TLC, Indiana Beach would reopen on June 14, 2020. The park would host its grand opening to universal acclaim. Many guests who've gone since Staples' ownership claim the park is now better than it's ever been. With the park now cleaned up, Staples went ahead and bought some used rides. In January 2021, Indiana Beach announced an addition of a used polyp ride. The more notable attraction was that they would be adding a Schwarzkopf triple loop roller coaster. What this implied was that they were saving Kumera. This was really great for enthusiasts because Kumera was a really good ride. Plus, Indiana Beach has far better maintenance than La Fria ever did. Now, due to the severe amount of damage it went through in Mexico, Indiana Beach had to perform a large refurbishment. So much so that as of the writing of this video, the coaster actually hasn't even opened yet, or even started testing. This shows the large dedication Indiana Beach has to opening this ride as safe as possible. In the time frame between when Kumera was announced to today, Indiana Beach bought two abandoned parks, a used Schwarzkopf shuttle loop from the same park, believe it or not, and even opened a Zion as a filler coaster. One new change to Kumera, now named All American Triple Loop, was that it received new trains and spare parts from the now defunct Mindbender from Canada. This means that All American Triple Loop should last years longer. After all this, at least we know that once All American Triple Loop reopens, it will at least be very safe. If there's one thing to learn, is that safety is the number one priority among everyone. You shouldn't be cheaping out on something if it means risking those around it. And hopefully another accident like this won't ever happen again. Thank you all so much for watching this video. This video is part of my series, What Caused the Accident, where we dive into how roller coaster and amusement park accidents actually occur. Please give me a like and consider subscribing, as that motivates me to make more awesome content in the future. For this series, we aim to clear up misinformation and show how safe roller coasters are. This is the Coaster Flood, riding out.